remember the good old days when this just started. It was kind of like being in Dennis's garage. <laughs> now they cleaned this room up and made it look classy. <laughs> yeah. It's like you'd have to pour your beer in a glass in here now. You can't just drink it out of the bottle. <laughs> I'm Arizona Family Political Editor Dennis Welch. Dennis, fake news Welch, try to tell the truth. And this is the Politics Unplugged Podcast. Dennis, if you have a problem with substance abuse, I am more than willing to talk to you anytime you need. All right, and welcome back to another edition of the Politics Unplugged Podcast, uh, budget edition. And I'm very pleased to be joined with uh, two people that, you know, know this kinds of stuff in and out. Marcus Del Artino, fixture doing? down at the legislature, and Reginald Bolding, former minority leader uh, for uh, in the House um, what, what do we call you, lawmaker emeritus now, uh, now, no, now I'll Reggie? Take it. I'll take it, I'll take it, yeah. <laughs> Recovering lawmaker. <laughs> Recovering lawmaker, is, yep. that, is that what we call it? Yep. Uh, you know, you guys, you know, uh, two, two people here who really know this kinds of stuff, and we're getting some early some early looks into the governor's budget proposal, um, which is going to set the tone uh, for what the, a lot of what the legislature does this year. Um, and let's start, like, big picture here. I'll go to you, Reggie. I mean, the, the governor is going to be doing what with the overall with this budget? There's going to be some cuts here because state finances right now, we're looking at projected budget deficits for the current year, next for current uh, fiscal year. And it's, could get, it's likely to get worse in the year after that. We're looking at right now at least $850 million budget shortfall. So this budget is going to get slimmer, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think the governor, she she's has a, has a balancing act right now, right? How do you actually take what the cards that have been dealt to you, right? Mm -hmm. When you look at, you know, revenues, wh what's projected, you know, what are some areas that are going to be some shortfalls and try to actually, you know, create a legacy as well. You know, how, how do you create, you know, uh, you know, items and, and big ticket initiatives mm -hmm. um, that you want to, you know, put plant your flag in and say, look, hey, I was the governor. This is uh, what I did. This is what I said on the campaign trail a couple of years ago. So it's a balancing act. And uh, I think that's what this budget tries to do. Yeah. And Marcus, you, you've had a chance to start looking at some of this stuff here. What's the what's the big takeaway for you as you, you start going through some of this budget material? Um, and if you're watching on, on YouTube, you can see all this paper here that we're looking and, and, des and, and quickly trying to study here. So what's, what's the big takeaway? You know, Dennis, when I first saw this, here was my first takeaway. We are not getting out in 100 days. <laughs> and for those of you who don't understand, uh, you know, for this sort of the legislative world, 100 days yeah. is the target to get out. It means a lot to them. It means nothing to real people. Yeah, or yeah. RPs, as I like to refer to them as. Yeah. The RPs out there don't care. I had a lot of confidence that we were going to be close to 100 days, yeah. and I don't think that's happening looking at this budget. So, all right, well, let's let's go into the uh, into those some what we know about this so far. Um, cuts, you know, if you got a deficit, you know, just like you, you, your home finances, if you're making less money, you got to cut back on a lot of things. Uh, Reginald, what is the big cuts here for this budget that you're seeing? Yeah, I'll start with some of them and, and also let Marcus talk a little bit about some of them as well. I mean, when you first look at, you know, prior year appropriations, mm -hmm. uh, revisions, right? Yep. So, you know, dollar amounts that the legislature and the governor agreed to that they put in place uh, in prior years. So this budget looks at, you know, fiscal year 2016 all the way to fiscal year 2023. And there's 13 specific items mm -hmm. in there that, you know, that there's going to be revisions uh, to those. I mean, you also have you know, different areas regarding, you know, ESA reform and, and you know, a few other projects, one time cuts mm -hmm. uh, that the, the governor's office is proposing to, to, to her office and also mm -hmm. to the state legislature. Um, I think this is going to be an area of quite contention. Yeah. Um, uh, and this, this is actually going to be one of the more fire, you know, areas of fireworks within the budget. Yeah. And I don't think and we were talking before the, the, the taping here, the ESA stuff that the governor's proposing here is probably, you know, it's dead on arrival accord, according to, you know, Republican lawmakers, both legislatively, and I would imagine in, in, in this budget term is what she's proposing to do that. Um, you know, uh, Marcus, maybe explain a little bit about that. And also there's some projects in here that were approved uh, last year 
they ain't going forward, are they? Yeah, there's a, and this was smart. Every governor should do this. <laughs> and that <laughs> is, if the money wasn't spent, we're taking it back. And yeah. some of these projects date back farther than last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that makes sense. And we're talking projects. We're talking capital projects. We're talking road construction, these kinds of things in order to get last year's budget balance, or passed. They, 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 you know, they appropriated this money to get these, jo- to get these projects done, but they're probably not going to be completed. That will probably be the biggest part of the recovery will be the budget mm-hmm. uh, transportation projects that we allotted last year. Mm-hmm. Now, there's some that date back further than last year, but the, the biggest number probably will be that transportation projects that went uh, largely to rural Arizona. These were could, could be construed as pork projects, yeah. um, but we're used to sort of get the budget going. And so you might you have specific projects throughout the state, and a lot of them are rural-focused, uh, frankly. But as part of that, for that money to have been spent, it had to be an ADOT's five-year projection, five-year project list, and it, none of those had made it to there yet. So it was easy money to to bring back into the budget. It would, it's just like you're planning on buying the 80 inch TV, but you know, you lost your job. Well, guess what? You ain't buying the 80 inch TV. So that's, yeah, that's yeah. sort of, it's like you had it on an order shop. and it's just like, well, it's on order. We haven't paid for it yet, but yeah, we're not, we're not doing that. Second part is ESA reform. And that's, she's got that totaled out at about $250 million. Um, and the problem with that is the speaker of the house, even before she started her state of the state speech, I think, said any EFSA reform is dead on arrival. So that's a $250 million hole that I think is going to ultimately we're going to have to come up with another $250 million there. And then the other one was STOs, repealed STOs. That's uh, the student tuition organi- uh, uh, organization, organization yeah. right? Yeah. That's another another uh, big, big time program in Arizona. Yeah. now. The interesting part about that one, I mean, I think they've got it scheduled for about $180 million, but that one grows. Um, and so, Aggressively. Y- y- you know, that now you're talking real money. I mean, year two is somewhere around $250 million. But again, dead on arrival at the legislature. So the, right there, you've got some, some holes in revenue recovery that we're going to mm-hmm. um, sort of mm-hmm. have to come up with. Well, it seems like, too, and tell me if I'm wrong, it's, you know, you, you know, no big surprise, but Democratic governors targeting Republican projects, be it the one-time capital projects Marcus was just, was just talking about, or ESAs, STOs, those are education programs that are near and dear to Republicans. How's this going to go over in the legislature, ready? Well, I wouldn't say that they're necessarily Republican projects uh, outside of that. You know, there was a Republican governor, yeah. Republican legislature who actually put these in, in place. You know, um, I mean, the, these are projects that, you know, the, the money hasn't been spent. The projects aren't shovel ready. There's uh, about two hundred and eighty million dollars in fund mm-hmm. sweeps um, that are going to come from, you know, different boards and agencies. Again, if they're not if they're not using the money, you have to reallocate it to, to make what's happened. And I guess even sort of doubling back, you have to ask yourself, you know, why does the governor have to, you know, sweep funds and use a, appropriations? And the, mon- the money's not there. You know, the money's mm-hmm. not there. You, you see uh, you see uh, ESA um, issues. You also see issues with regards to the, the Ducey flat tax, and, and mm-hmm. she has to figure out how to pay for things. Yeah, and, and we'll get to that in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a minute because, you know, as she's releasing her budget today, she just, in the state, just got some really bad economic news from some forecasters down at the legislature. We'll get to that in a minute. How do you think this is going to go over some of, the, some of these cuts down at the legislature markets? Oh, you know, it's an interesting strategy on on her behalf in that, you know, it's forcing Republicans. One, we got to, you know, the Republicans are going to want to fight over ESAs. They're going to want to fight over STOs, but then defend some of those transportation projects. And frankly, I'll be honest with you, some of those transportation projects are desperately needed in rural Arizona. Mm-hmm. If you've been out riding, driving the roads in Springerville or uh, up in Alpine, you'll you'll sort of see the need for it. But um, but that being said, the money doesn't exist. But it, it it's going to cause, you know, the caucus, the Republicans that have to try and figure out, OK, can can I put up a big enough fight to defend my pork project and STOs and ESAs? It's a lot to ask for. So, um, you know, I, there's going to be a lot of grousing going on, I think, is the best way to put it, which leads me to my conclusion that we're going to be there a little bit longer than 100 days. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, typically, though, uh, it's easy. It's the fights over cuts are a lot easier than the 
fights over how to spend the money? Am, am I right there, Reggie? No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, when you have a lot of money, everyone has their special project, their idea that they want to yeah. put an, on board. And I, you know, this when you now have a, an, an election year, folks are going to be looking to to save projects that they that they asked for last year. So, uh, I mean, this is going to definitely be one of those scenarios in which you're going to have lawmakers trying to figure out, you know, what to fight for, what to give up, and it's going to be a, a very difficult uh, opportunity for them to, to figure that out. Well, and the evidence already exists, right? Like, last year we actually had money. We went the longest <laughs> <laughs> legislative session in the history of Arizona. With money. So, <laughs> with money. so yeah. clearly the evidence supports that yeah, yeah, it was a it it, it, it was weird, man. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 what happened last year with the you know fighting over the money? It definitely was a much longer session as well. Uh, but you brought up like lawmakers trying to save be trying to save stuff. Well, the, the governor also in her her proposal is offering some protective measures and the things she's not going to touch to balance the books per se. Um, one of those is the rainy day fund, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the the conversation has been, you know, when do you use the rainy day? Fund? Yeah. And I mean, and, and the question and and everything that I've I, I've always heard is you want to use it when the economy is suffering. But when you look at some of the projections, you look at the economy, you look at Arizona's economy, you know, jobs coming in, it's, it's not raining. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of these things are uh, man-made uh, decisions that have, like, put us in a, in a hole. So, you know, when there's things that are side of that, that's when you want to tap into that fund. So these things are recoverable the question mm -hmm. is can you get a deal done actually just to solve the issue yeah and um let's let's go on now too and let's talk a little bit even though you're looking at trying to save money the governor is proposing to some spending increases in certain areas uh let's go through some of that there marcus i mean we're talking about border we're talking about kids care this this uh, uh, and stuff like that right yeah let me, i mean there's got two things that are big ticket items that just plainly have to be done right prisoner mm -hmm. health care uh, as a result of a lawsuit so mm -hmm. that's two 275 i want to say 275 in prisoner health care that needs to be spent billion correct uh, 275 million Million. Million. Two, two, two okay. Um, I think we're talking about state budgets. We got to be a little bit more specific because we're talking about big numbers here. Um, and that's a result of a lawsuit. And so that sort of has to be paid. And then two would be access for uh, Reggie. I can't remember what that was. Uh, I think it was 180. Yep. Uh, 180 million. Um, and that's that has to be paid for. Mm -hmm. We've got increased participation and access and those numbers are up. That's the non-sexy part. Mm -hmm. um, but then you look at the budget as a reflection, if you will, of the state of the state. So what are my priorities in the state of the state and how does that get implemented in the budget? You're looking at border enforcement activities. Um, she's got increased money for that, um, mm -hmm. usually DPS um, and some things uh, for uh, increased border security. Um, and we've got um, a you got some early yeah, childhood. There's a lot of things around early childhood development, mm -hmm. kids, school lunches, um, and and uh, pharmaceuticals. Firm, uh, we're going to put some caps on on. Yeah, we're, on, there's a good uh, half a million to create a new department actually to be looking at that to try to cap uh, the price of prescription drugs. Correct. Yeah. So there's the the. Um, the prescription drug affordability division uh, yeah. that they're going to put in place. So I think the governor, she she's laid out a, a, a few areas in which she's, I think I would say, debating uh, the Republican legislature to fight her on. Are mm -hmm. you going to fight on, you know, uh, affordable prescriptions for, for seniors? Are you going to fight, uh, yeah. you know, provide, you know, you want to be on the other side of that one, right? Be, yeah. Right, right. Or, or early childhood for, for families. You know, as the economy is growing, you want more people to take these jobs in manufacturing, construction. Kids have to go somewhere. The cost of early childhood education is skyrocketing. So, you know, she's putting her, you know, her foot down there. And then when it comes down to the border, the federal government still has not got it right when it comes down to the Arizona border. So, I mean, as a as a border state governor, you can either, you know, rely on what the federal government is doing or you could put your foot down and she's, you know, asking for ongoing funding for her operation secure. Initiative. Operation secure. Yeah, yeah it's a great. <laughs> Love those government names for programs. I'll bet you twenty bucks she submits a bill to the feds for it. So. I think she already did. And she's waiting. She's holding her breath until that until that money is returned, right? Until that bill is paid. Um, anything you see here, you know, could the Republicans put their foot down on any one of these things? I mean, yes, you're creating this new office to try to cap prescription drug costs. I think a lot of people, I mean, most people I know, would want a cap on on prescription costs, but. You know, there is that philosophical thing with Republicans is 
you're creating a new office, you're growing government. Um, is, is, there, is there anything you're seeing on some of these proposed increases where Republicans may put their foot down? I think this entire budget's up for negotiation. I mean, okay. everything. I think that's where we stand sort of today. Um, and privately, Republicans will say, uh, and again, privately, look, we grew government too much under Ducey, um, which, frankly, the numbers somewhat support. Um, and now is a time that we can right-size it um, mm-hmm. and, and cut some areas where we really need to cut. Um, and, and so that's what I expect to be sort of their mantra or their thought process going into this budget. Period. Yeah, and there are some big ticket things over, uh, you know, over the last few years or even the last year when the legislature was out when it come, comes to long term care. Right. So you've seen, you know, facilities, uh, you know, who weren't, you know, showing up doing what they needed to, you know, for for seniors who were living there. So, you know, there's some there's some funds in here that would, you know, protect or provide opportunities to to find those individuals who are uh, not showing up for, you know, seniors and long-term care facilities. And then when it comes to Arizona housing, I mean, it, it, we're, in a, we're in a housing crisis. So there, there's a little bit of funds here uh, that are going to provide some down payment, you know, uh, insurance, mortgage relief for those who are looking to, to become homeowners. All right. Now let's get to the real bad news. Because <laughs> as she's proposing this, we got some paperwork, some forecasts from uh, legislative uh, budget a- 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 analysts as the Joint Legislative Budget Committee. Um, their their outlook, their forecast for the future, for the future upcoming fiscal years, not very good. A lot of a lot of red that we see there. About one point seven billion dollars, according to this. And if you combine the next fiscal year with the fiscal year after that. Um, break some of this down for us, Sir Reginald. Yeah, I mean, you know, what what we're seeing is that, you know, that the the JLBC they're basically saying, look, we have a crisis, you know, uh, with this FY with within FY twenty four. We are, there's a s- significant gap, you know, um, you know, it's twenty seven percent drop in individual tax collections, you yes. know. So and you know, when you have a twenty seven percent drop in tax collections, you're gonna have a budget shortfall. When you look at Arizona's, you know, budget is really made up of a few different things, sales tax, income tax, corporate tax, insurance premiums, things of that nature. Yeah. And you can't have a, a significant loss in individual income tax and hope to and, you know, to do, to do things that you want to and, do. And sales tax, according to JLBC, is actually up. It didn't hit forecast. Right. But sales tax is actually up. What's driving down income tax uh, t- taxes here, Marcus? Uh, individual income tax collection is, is being attributed to, at least in this JLBC report, to the Ducey um, mm-hmm. tax cut, which, if you remember, we went to a Kind of a parting gift from one governor to, to the next, to, I suppose. Two and a half percent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, I mean, because it's explained. Is, yeah, is it explained why this, the, the the new governor doesn't have you know is is dealing with some pretty big deficits right now? Well, yeah, but I, as the speakers pointed out, um, the, the interesting thing about this is this isn't a long term problem. It's it's a cash flow problem, and so okay. in year when you get into year three and year four, everything mass out. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the cash flow problem that we're at right now. So it's. You know, eight hundred fifty million this year, eight hundred fifty million the next year, and then we start to go into smooth sailing. But um, but it's a it's a cash it's a cash flow problem right now. Yeah, you know, I mean, when you look at that from like the political lens, it's the the perfect time when you jump right back into a new governor's race, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and, and then you have to you know prove the case or fight the case that hey, look, I had to clean up the mess from from the prior year. Uh, prior governor, prior administration, but you also have to make sure that look that that you're figuring out a way to solve this problem. And and I would imagine with this year's budget, I, I think that the governor's office is going to try to you know right size government the best that they can, mm-hmm. um, and so you don't have this uh, ongoing challenge because you only could say it's the, the the other governor, you know, prior administration's fought for so long. Yeah. Um, but but this truly is one of those things where you, you know you're you're you were stuck. You were the hand that was given to you was one in which you just didn't have a lot of cash for it ongoing. All right. Well, um, you know, um, gonna need to wrap this up. You know, um, uh, want get, to get just give you guys the final word on this and just you know tell me again big takeaways overall. What what kind of message is this uh, budget sending to the Arizona uh, public at this point? I here's in. By the way, sorry for starting, but I, you know I think we got used to um, 
you know, state of the state speeches and governors coming out with these massive new policies and the discussion revolving around whatever that new mm-hmm. idea it is, whether it was commerce authority or, or, you know, I can pick probably a thousand things. I think what is differentiating this governor and this budget is, look, we don't have the ability to do grand, huge new projects and new focuses. We need to sort of get our house in order. Mm -hmm. And so that's why this might not be the world's sexiest budget, um, but it's sort of focused on here's where I can make improvement, border security, pharmacy, or cost of drugs, um, and kids um, within existing programs, but not sort of setting up new programs. flashy programs. Yeah, and I, I would agree with that. I mean, uh, this seems like a, a pragmatic budget, one in which I, I think that she's, you know, re- extending the hand out to the, to the Republican majority and saying, hey, look, these are some of the big ticket items that we're hearing in the public when it comes down to border, when it comes down to housing, when it comes down to seniors, rural communities. Look, let's try to figure out a way to do this. Um, you know, I do believe, to, to Mark's point, everything in here I think is negotiable. Uh, but but I do think that the Republican majority is going to have to to give on some things, uh, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's a ESA, STO, who knows, but there, there's going to have to be some, some give and take there. All right, we're going to have to wrap it up right there. Thank you, gentlemen, both for joining us with this conversation about the budget. I know it can be a lot, uh, you know, to break down, and um, you guys, excellent job. Thank you so much for doing that. Thanks, Dad. Thank you. All right. And welcome back to the back half of this edition of the Politics Unplugged podcast. We're back here with producer extraordinaire Colin. Colin. Yes. Did you stay awake for that discussion? Because, you know, I, I know, I mean, you know. I, I don't know. Budget's your thing? Is, you know, numbers, is, is state finances, that is that the thing? Uh, it's not my thing, but it's the thing for plenty of people. So I'm glad we could provide the service of breaking down a budget because there's nothing sexier than breaking down a budget. No, man. That uh, yeah, that yeah, budgets can be kind of kind of dry, but uh, yeah. you know they're important. And yes. when we get more details on that, there'll be line items in there that will be a big deal when you start seeing a, you know a program gets reduced or a program gets axed. You know, these are the kinds of things is when the rubber, you know, meets the road, when, you know, the public really can start feeling, seeing the impacts of that. Yeah. And we should be getting more of that information here um, as the days go by and we start digging into those individual line items. In the meantime, uh, the legislature kicked off this past week. Uh, you yes. have, do you have any takeaways? About the state of the state speech, and thank God I'm able to ask somebody that question. <laughs> I plan to do that on the on on the TV, TV show, show, and yeah. you also produce that. Yeah, hence producer extraordinaire. Yeah, and I wasn't able to. No, ran out of time on that. Ran one. out of time on that. We even scheduled more time. Yes, and he still ran out of time. Yes. Anytime um, you get into ESAs, man, it's like the it's like Godzilla going through Tokyo. It eats up all the time of the show. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. So uh, let me ask you <laughs> <laughs> your professional analysis and take on the governor's state of the state speech. What did you think? I mean, ultimately, she laid out a bunch of things that are um, going to run into a brick wall with yeah. the Democrats or with the, the, yeah, with the Republicans. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she wants to cut back on ESAs, which is understandable, and that seems to be largely a no-go. Yeah. There might be a few things there she can get through, the security issues, that sort of thing. Uh, Outside of that, she's not making any progress there. I (laughs) I mean, who knows? It's not a great sign when the Republican leaders are holding a news conference outside before the state of the state. Yeah, I mean, everybody's going to be trying to get some political mileage out of it. But, uh, you know, I thought there was plenty of stuff there where they can get some stuff done. But, you know, um, you know, Republicans seem to like what she—they're pretty stoked she's talking about the border, doing things on the border. Um, You know, we're, you know, so— uh, you know, not, not much to say. I've, I've seen a lot of state of the state speeches, and, and that was definitely one of them. And and we'll see what the border means because it's a federal issue. So there's, there's not yeah. a whole lot. It's not, it's not, you know, governors are kind of, you know, handcuffed a lot when it comes to that cause yes. have any authority over that. But in the meantime, um, lawmakers are busy dropping a lot of pieces of legislation. And we've seen a yes. few. 
um, few bills that are uh, kind of interesting that we like to, you know, poke a little fun at or people yeah. seem to appear to be having some fun with. Uh, one bill would uh, have would require that lawmakers have to submit to a drug test. Yeah. Colin, what do you think? I don't think that's going to get a hearing. What do you think? Should <laughs> lawmakers have to be drug tested? Should they have to pee in a cup? I, I... Or draw blood or whatever they do these days. I mean, you can make an argument for it. We require other people, some in the public sector, to... to Yeah, if you're driving a bus or Uh, these kinds of things, sure. Um, I mean, it's never going to happen. It's never going to... The bill doesn't list any any sort of guidelines as to how you would do it, what you would test for, Mm -hmm. any of that. I mean, sure, you can say they should be drug tested, but it's... It ain't gonna happen. Yeah, so you know they want to, uh, you know they want to. Uh, one one law is a drug test. You know lawmakers. Another bill. I think it's the same lawmaker who dropped the 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 drug test bill. Also dropped a bill um, that would mandate parents um, have to take mandatory training courses. Uh, you know, mostly dealing with uh, dangers to 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 minors. Uh, we did an online poll, and it seemed like our viewers, our readers of the of of, of the website, um, pretty much opposed. Last I saw, it was like almost sixty percent said you shouldn't require parents to have to take mandatory training, which frankly seemed low to me. Yeah, I don't know how many of us are signing up for parenting lessons from our state government. <laughs> it just doesn't really feel like a board that I look to for advice. On raising a child from yeah. fourth grade through yeah. eighth grade, and it, and yeah, it was somehow tied into child trafficking, which yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, and this is the, this. Okay, and to be clear, to be to, to clarify here, this is the kind of part of the year, the part of the legislative session where you see a lot of weird pieces of yes. legislation dropped, and yes. th- you know, th- there are other serious pieces of legislation out there that it will, you know, that are important and will get a hearing and get, you know, f- debated over. Um, some of these bills, probably not, you know, I don't yeah. know where, where <laughs> they go. Uh, but my favorite bill of the week, and it seems like the lawmakers having some fun with this, and I can appreciate that, actually, yeah. but he wants to name an official state planet, and he says it's Pluto. Yes. Which does have one complication there. It's not a planet. It's not a planet. They 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 lost their planet designation. It's a dwarf planet. You know, like I don't <laughs> know about you, Colin, no but, longer I, but a power five planet. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I like my planets to be real planets. <laughs> By and large, yeah. I was wondering if their second choice was the moon. <laughs> my, my, I was joking when I first saw that. You know, my my initial thought was like, gee, you know, somebody should ask this lawmaker. Uh, you know, like, yeah. Hey, Earth not good enough Earth, for yeah, you? Apparently not. No. But but apparently, you know, this guy is having some fun with this. And there is an Arizona connection to Pluto, yes. correct? Yes. I believe discovered here. Yeah. Um, which is really cool, except that it's not a planet. So it, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was It was cooler. misidentified it in was Arizona. Cooler when it was a planet. <laughs> to be clear, it was, it was misidentified yeah. in Arizona. Now that it's just a, you know, mass out there. Yeah. I don't know what the hell they call it now. Yeah, a giant asteroid. But planet Emeritus. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not as cool as it was before. I like that. Planet Emeritus. Yeah. Planet Emeritus. Yeah. So, all right, let's 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 move on. As you are wont to do and very good at doing, um, you identified a new list here that yeah. we we love that's yeah. ex, that's that's uh um, God bless un- Rolling Stone. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's yes. that's just it's the list is just not needed Spe- specifically when you're talking. Explain this list. There's a lot on this list. This is the Rolling Stone 500 greatest albums. 500. And I'll say right out, no, we're not going through all 500. <laughs> uh, 500. 500 albums. And they revise this every few years. They first did it, I think, in 2003. Yeah. There was a 2013 version and a, and a 2020 version, I think, and this is the 2023 version. Yeah. And when they first put it out 20 years ago, they caught a lot of flack because basically if you were not a white guy putting out music in the 70s, you <laughs> did not make the top 500. Yeah, yeah. Um, They've changed that. Yeah, and I think back then their number one was uh, Sergeant Pepper's, and I'm looking, it's now, it's now number 24. So, yeah. 
Um, uh, shall I go through the top ten? Yeah, let's do, let's do the top ten because like we I looked at the top ten. I, I really don't have much of a problem with the top ten. No, it's I, you know these are all good albums. Um, they wouldn't be my top ten, but there's someone's no. top ten. They're hard no. to argue with. All right, number number ten, Miseducation of Laura's Love Lauren Hill by Lauren Hill. Yeah, yeah. Uh, number nine, Bob Dylan, Blood on the Tracks. I love that record. Phenomenal record. I'm gr- I'm glad it was the first Dylan record on that yes. list. It's it's my favorite. It is my favorite as well. Uh, number eight, uh, Prince and the Revolution, Purple Rain. You can't argue with putting Prince in the top yeah, ten of no. anything. And it's a great album. Uh, number seven, uh, Fleetwood Mac, Rumors. Yeah, I can t- give or take Fleetwood Mac. Uh, I mean, I know people yeah. just, they, ugh, they just, they, they, I mean, they, they, they're ride or die with that band. I am like, take them, take them or leave them. Yes. Um, Go Your Own Way is on that album. That's a great song. Otherwise, mm, whatever. Yeah. Um, that on the Forrest anyway, Gump. I mean, it was that on the Forrest Gump soundtrack or something like I that? Probably is on every soundtrack. Uh, number six, Nevermind by Nirvana. Yeah, you know. sure. Yeah, yeah. very. Uh, what whether you like the album or not, that's an important record for. I mean, at least yeah. for the '90s, it was. Yeah. yeah. Um, number five, uh, the Beatles appearance in the top ten, Abbey Road. Yeah, my favorite Beatles record is Rubber Soul. Uh, yeah, I would have a hard time picking something other than Rubber Soul or Revolver. Yeah, but if best. you start doing top ten my, like rock records, yeah, you it's like you're almost obliged to have the Beatles in the top ten. Beatles in there somewhere. Uh, number four, Songs in the Key of Life by Stevie Wonder. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's just, that, that's during that era, though. You could pick any one of those records he, he put his, out during that run, time. His run through the early 70s it's was just, unbelievable. Yeah, it's just like, yes. oh, good Lord. I would I would probably go Inner Visions, but there's music of my mind. There's, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's, there's a laundry list. Uh, number three, uh, Joni Mitchell, Blue. I'm not a fan of Joni Mitchell. I, just, Mitchell I really, either. I'm sorry. And I realize plenty of people are. I'm not going to denigrate yeah. the choices. I, yeah. I wouldn't have it there, but that's cool. Uh, number two, Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys. Yeah, that's a great keep, record. Yeah, I, you know, they, I keep getting told how great that record is, and I, I'll believe them. I see. I, I like it. It's no, a there's a couple of good songs. The production I hear is like, "Well, it was Revolution." I'm like, okay, was, yeah. cool. You know, um, what's funny is whenever you hear people talk about the greatness of the Beach Boys, and you know, people list them as possibly the best American band of all time. Yada yada. Sure. They're talking about Pet Sounds. They're not talking about anything else no. in the Beach Boys catalog, which is like 50 years. Uh, well, no, it's 60 years really yeah. of yeah. stuff that's you know mostly bad. <laughs> You know, whatever. But, uh, Pet Sounds is brilliant. Uh, number one, uh, What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. Great record. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, no, it seems like, the, you know, Motown jams, like, like the, there were records before What's Going On and then everything after What's Going On. And yeah. you mentioned Stevie Wonder earlier. I, you know, who knows whether those records could have been could have been made uh, under that label had it not been for Marvin Gaye and, and What's Going On, which is and yeah, it's a turn. 1971, which is about yeah. the time he saw Stevie Wonder yeah. start. Yeah, because he started out putting out different stuff. Socially and, conscious stuff yeah, and, and more musically advanced and stuff. I hate the term, but it's uh, apropos here, game changer. It really was. It was. Um, Revolver was number 11, by the way. Thriller at number 12 by Michael Jackson. It's not my favorite Michael Jackson record, but, yeah, it's, but, but it's an important We're slightly one. music snobs, though. Yeah, their number one, their top Rolling Stones record was Exile on Main Street at 14. Well, that was a surprise, A, that Rolling Stones was left off. But, okay, yeah. I get it, whatever. Uh, Sticky Fingers is my favorite record. Um, but, you know, Exile Main yeah. Street, great yeah, record. Ex- yeah, that's my number two Stones record, so that's fine. Uh, top hip-hop record looks it, to be, it takes a nation of, well, I, what do you call Lauryn Hill hip-hop? I yeah, know. I mean, yeah. I, I was yeah. surprised. I was surprised, there, and there should be, I mean, hip-hop's been around for 50 years now, and there yes. should be a better representation in the top 10. Than and they yeah, but they've they've sort of packed the rest of it after taking as much abuse as they did <laughs> for the whiteness of the earlier versions. You've got Public Enemy at 15 with it takes a nation of millions to hold us back. You've got Kanye America. West at 17, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Mm-hmm. Kendrick Lamar at 19 with The Pimp a Butterfly. So, yeah. Um So we've got our own lists. We we, we do. We do. Um yeah, but five hundred. I don't need five hundred or anything. I don't, I don't need five hundred. And and my God, are their websites terrible for this? Yeah. Going through the entire, I found someone who had broken down the top fifty, and I'm working off of that. I read through the entire five hundred. Oh yeah. But, oh, and um, notable in the top five hundred 
Because there's certain people who are fans of the, uh, oh. the podcast who will want to know. Oh, we, yes, we've got we've got to keep this up. We've got to keep up our Eric Clapton bashing. The uh, the only appearance by Clapton in this version is Derek and the Dominoes, uh, Layla, and other assorted love songs. I believe it was at two twenty six. <laughs> um, and he may we, and he may not have done the solo in there. That's always I, yeah. That may I, have been Dwayne Allman. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, um, there I haven't looked it up. I like Layla, and uh, I think um, I think Bell Bottom Blues is also on that album, mm. um, which is okay. Yeah. The, uh, but, yeah, anything I like from that album, I'm crediting to Dwayne Allman and not. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, initial, the initial 2003 list had three Cream albums on yeah. it. Cream does not make the top 500 anymore. Good. Um, and Clapton solo did not uh, did not make the top five hundred. Yeah, well, thank God, thank God. Overrated. Yeah, but we that's 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 people who listen to this podcast know our feelings very know our feelings <laughs> about that man. A few times. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you want me to go through my top five? Yeah, let's uh, yeah let's do it. Uh, number one for me, mm-hmm. Sticky Fingers by the Rolling Stones. Okay, it's a great record. That is a great it's, record. Um, I mean. Uh, brown Sugar, Can't You Hear Me Knocking, Sway, mm-hmm. Bitch, uh, Mi- uh, Moonlight Mile. Yeah. It's a great record. Yeah. Number two, uh, Octung Baby by U2. Oh, okay. I would be a okay. U2 guy. That's my favorite album. They're just solid start to finish. Yeah. I, I, I like U2. They're just, they're not my, my, my thing, though. But I, I do like U2. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I get it. And it, it, that's just not a band that's in my wheelhouse. But yeah, continue. Yeah. Uh, number three, Who's Next by The Who. Oh, okay. This really easily could have been Quadrophenia, and I may actually prefer Quadrophenia, but Who's Next has uh, Won't Get Fooled Again on it, and that's, yeah. I kind of love that song. So it Bubba it O'Reilly like, or? Bubba O'Reilly's really, on there. Yeah, that, Behind Blue Eyes, Morgan, no. my wife, yeah. Um, number four, The Clash, London Calling. Yeah, yeah. And number five, Talking Heads Remain in Light. <laughs> That's a good record. Yeah. It's and I was actually surprised. It, it was it made the top 50 for Rolling Stone. I thought that might be a bit of an obscurity, but they had it like 46. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the, the the next five, the next five that didn't make the cut were Blood <laughs> on the Tracks, mm-hmm. uh, Van Morrison's Moondance, uh, Bowie's Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. Okay. That's a great record. And I could have put Low on there, too, but they're both great. Uh, Stevie's Inner Visions and uh, Rod Stewart, Every Picture Tells a Story. Okay. I love early Rod Stewart. And that's okay. when, yeah, well, in the Faces era. All right. That's a great, great record. Yeah. All right. Well, um, and like I, we were supposed to do top five, so I did my assignment. I'm not cheating. You went down to 10. I, yeah, I know. I um, and, my... and for me, like, you know, something like this, it just, it's like I, I, I sit down to write out a list, and it's almost like writer's block. Like, I, it's so much. It's, yes. So this is more of a list. It's just the personal thing. It's probably more of a, the, 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 the bands that in, influenced me or affected me the most over the years. Right. In 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 no particular order, um, you know, uh, "Dear You" by Jawbreaker, and you know, if you want to, if you if you want us to put out a list, uh, you know, a, a playlist again, we can because I, I, I'm assuming not everybody who listens to this podcast may be <laughs> familiar with everybody on my list, but they're yeah, they're more familiar with the Stones than Jawbreaker. Yeah, but "Dear You" and Jawbreaker, super important record, um, you know, and also the certain people of certain, you know, in certain scenes certain age went through a bad breakup this record probably helped out a lot anyway um there was uh you know bad religions no control okay love that record um you know if i was for and this, this next one if i was forced to rank them would probably be number one just because of how it affected me and the production value of everything it would be the shape of punk to come by the refused um, I just absolutely love that band to death. Um, in fact, you know, they, they, they broke up on their first U S tour, which I just always loved. Uh, <laughs> and, and they, 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 they got back together years later and we were supposed to go fly to San Francisco and see their first show at the Warfield. Um, and it turned out to be their second show because they played that Coachella thing oh, yeah. the night before. 
but that was one of my favorite concerts ever was going up there to check that nice. with with some friends of course i put london calling the clash on there it's just yeah. it's a, a really important yes record for a lot of different reasons and out of step by minor threat all right you know, so that, that that would be my top five. It's more of an emotional thing. I don't have some sort of intellectual or academic, right. like, you know, reasoning behind my top five. Um, it's just a, an emotional thing when I think back of, of, of some of the stuff that's most important to me. Nice. And so sh- should we put together a playlist or? Yeah, we could. You know, I can do that. I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if people well, listen to them. I don't know either, but we'll find out. <laughs> we'll tweet it. I'll put together a playlist. We'll tweet it out on the uh, it's AZ Unplugged yes. Twitter handle. We will put that out there immediately. Yeah. All right. Any other grand thoughts from you this week? Big nah, week. I budgets. We Secretary yeah. of <laughs> yes. State of the State no. speeches. Budgets. The kickoff of the legislative yeah, no. session. Um, yeah, I'm all at Twitter still about the, the budget discussion. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know, I man. That really gets you. That gets you going, dude. Yeah. No, I think we've covered budget as, as much as uh, we need to. Uh, <laughs> I will say, you and Marcus and Reggie did a great job going over. Yeah, they did, and they were wonderful, and we thank them yes. very much for stopping yes. by here and making sense because, you know, it's important. Um, you know, it's just a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You got to hit the boring but important every it's, once in a while. Yeah, I know. Before we move on to crapping on Eric Clapton. <laughs> It's always such a good time, it man. Is, anytime, anytime you can dunk on Eric Clapton, <laughs> give me the rock, man. Pass me the exactly. rock. I'm, go, I'm exactly. going in. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. See you next time. See you then. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, the Google Store, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. See you next time.